weekend. We're already moving in the Holy Ghost. And uh, Joe and Gene got a testimony about some of the, the Holy Spirit's activity in their lives. So give it up for Joe and Gene. Good morning. Um, the Lord's really put on our heart to share a little bit about um, his prop, his prophecy to us and um, how he's always faithful to his word. So you're going to have to bear it with an older guy in new technology while I do some of this. In the Passion Translation, <laughs> Psalms 145, 13 says, The Lord, you reign over every your never-ending kingdom. Through all the ages of time and eternity, you are faithful to fulfill every promise you've made. You manifest yourself as kindness in all that you do. So there's a couple of things I specifically want to share with you. Um, Gene and I have been coming here for a few years now. And um, the very first night we came here, Denny Kramer was here as we came to a conference. And um, the following time, he didn't say anything to us the first time we were here. The following time, and I can tell you it was April the 3rd, and you hold, you hold, I'll read. Tag team. I w we, whenever a prophet talks to Gene and I, we get the recording and write it down. So we physically listen to it and write it down. So what I'm going to read to you uh, is verbatim from God to us. Okay, the prophet's just the intermediate. Um, he doesn't, uh, and God doesn't send a prophet to tell you something or me something um, for no apparent reason at all. So we're here on April the 3rd in a crowd, and Denny calls us out. And here's what he reads. He, t he prophesizes over us. There's a reason why you need to hear a prophecy to understand what we're sharing. I see a piece of property that you're going to buy and sell for a significant profit. And so just pray about it, whether you own it now or you will. I don't know. But I see a land transfer. I see buying and selling a chunk of land, making a significant profit on it, all right. So think about it. Pray about it. If it's new to you, think about it. Pray about it. Find out what I mean. I see real estate, real estate, real estate over both of you. So before I read the next one, I want to share with you, we know nothing about real estate. Denny said it, we heard it, and like many of us, when we hear a word, it's like, that's not for me, but, so we go home and we pray about it, and we place it before God. Okay, God, I don't know nothing about real estate, I really don't desire to know anything about real estate, but I do desire to do your will, so we're going to release it to you, and um, it's in your hands, and you show us what you want to do. This was April the 3rd, 2011. Okay, so prophets don't happen, prophecies don't happen overnight, so I want you to understand that. So the next year, bear with me, please. <laughs> Denny calls us out again. I'm going to tell you what I see, Joe and Jean. I'm going to break something off you guys. You've done nothing wrong to deserve this, but hear me out. There's an active curse over your life. Some folks have cursed you. They have wanted your demise, your ruin, your destruction. They have spoken words of poverty, financial distress over both of you. Catch this. Witches and warlocks in the church through jealousy have come against you, and they've wanted your doom, your destruction, your failure, and there's an active curse over you. There's nothing you've done. You're the victims here. But the Lord said it's about 10 years old, so go back in time, and you'll probably connect with some of those folks who did that to you. I want you to know that Gene and I never did. Um, that's not, it, it never, was never a concern to us who did it, okay? We left it to the Lord. We surrendered it. We asked for his peace on them um, and his correction on them, and to this day, we still don't know who cursed us, and we really don't care, absolutely. So, um so what it says is, but I'm going to come around behind you, lay hands on both of you, and I'm going to um, break the curse off of you. There. God said, now you can begin to see the hand of God poured into your lives. 
to make up for the 10 years. And the Lord would say financial prosperity on an unbelievable level. There, says the Lord. Okay, so there's some of the history. So we surrendered that. Obviously, we surrendered that to the Lord. And we'll take all the blessing you can give us, Lord. We're not, we're not silly with that. Um, so in God's timing, things turn fast. So I want you to know that we pray. Um, I specifically prayed one thing in my life about, Lord, tell me what wonder-working faith is. Little did I know when I was asking him to tell me what that was, he was preparing to show us what that was. Telling me and showing me are two different things. So um, in March, um, if, you, if you've if you come to our house, you know we have a small little place. We had a small little place, um, and it was very comfortable for us. Um, this year, Gene's Heart's Desire has always been out of a screen porch. I put it on last year. This was going to be the first year we put our feet up and enjoy that without labor. Um, in the meantime, in March, the Lord is stirring us, and we don't know it. Um, people are up here talking about get out of your comfort zone, be obedient, and I'm listening, and I'm sitting back there saying, nah, that's not for us. Our house is finally where we want it. Yeah. <clears throat> so in March, there's a farmhouse at the end of 195. I know it's going to be a little lengthy, but God deserves all um, what he's done in our lives. So I want you to understand that he's faithful to his promise. So you heard the promises, 2011, 2012. Last September, house goes on the market for sale. We drive by it for six months, seven months, eight months, never moves. One day I'm sitting on the porch with Gene. I said, what do you think about that farmhouse? All right, I'll tell you. I said, um, okay. Little did I know the week before we went by, and Gene said the house is still for sale as we drove by, and the Lord said, yes, that's because it's yours. But she wasn't going to share that with me. So neither one of us had a desire to move. But if I was going to move, it would be to purchase that house. So um, we talked about it. We prayed about it. Um, God was very specific with us. He gave us a mount to put our house on the market. And he gave us 21 days. It's going to be sold within 21 days. Okay. So Okay. So we put it on the market. The realtor comes in. She tells us what it's worth. She says, you're not going to believe and understand everything I tell you. But here's the price we're going to put it on the market for. That's too much. This is the price we're going to put it on the market for. God gave us a specific number. And it will be sold. And she goes, how long are you going to put it on the market for at that price? 21 days. Huh? 21 days. Um, she goes, well, we'll carry it for 60 days. I said, yeah, it will be sold in 21 days. I like your optimism, she says. I said, okay. So um, I want you to know, if you don't know how fast 21 days is, put your house on the market. One, Charlie and I joked in the back one time. Um, I said, we only need one family to look at the house. One family looked at the house. One family bought the house. We had a price in 10 days, a contract in 16. And they were telling us to move. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. We haven't bought a house. We hadn't even talked to one, so I talked to Ruler. I said, the house at the end of the street we're supposed to buy, tell him. She goes, well, what are you looking for, a four-bedroom? Nope, looking for the house at the end of the street. 195 Tallinn. I said, go get it for me. So um, <laughs> she, she looked into it, and the house was illegally on the market. So it couldn't be on the market. Okay, I just sold my house. Wonder working faith. I want you to understand. Wonder working faith. Now we're going to learn what that is. We don't have a home. So and I shared, <laughs> I shared this with a few. I go back to the Lord. God, I know. I didn't hear from you. We're supposed to move. We're supposed to buy the house. What am I supposed to do? Wah, 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 wah. Here's what I heard. Really? Really? We're going to go there? Get over it. You know me better than that. <laughs> okay. I got over it. <laughs> A couple following days, Jeannie emails me a house in Willington. I'm at work. I open it up. I read about it. I send her a text back. Wow. That's all I did. Um, that following weekend, we went and looked at it. Um, and uh, we made an offer, and within a couple of days, we closed on that house. 
and, and that's where we move to. All this to tell you that when God gives you a promise, and he's given many of us a promise here, I don't know where he's given prophets in other churches, but I want you to understand when he gives us a promise, I want to encourage you to do two things. One is write it down, okay? Get the tape, do whatever you got to do. If you're called to a prophet to speak to you, everybody has a phone, put it on record. Record it. It won't sink in while you're hearing it. It will sink in when you keep going back and forth, back and forth to get every single word, because no word is void. Every single word that uh, the prophet tells you, God doesn't just send you a message arbitrarily. So I want to encourage you, many of you have received those, grasp them. If you forgot what they are, go back in the archives, get the tape, write it down. We have moved. Um, so within four months, within four months, God moved us from not wanting to move to a desire to move, to move. And in between, he gave us a ministry of why he moved us. Okay, it was specific. We went from a little ranch house to a massive four-bedroom farmhouse that is beyond belief for us. Um, we've been blessed. But we've been blessed because God has been faithful to his word, to us. We're, and he's not a respecter of persons. He is faithful to us, the word he gave us. He's faithful to you, the word he gave you. So our testimony is to tell you, right when I read right from the beginning of Psalms, God is faithful to the end for his promise. So if you got a promise, I want to encourage you to jump on it, stand on it, release it to God, and say, prepare me for it. Even if it's something I don't know. Real estate is something I have no desire to know. But the word three years ago was manifest in our life just a month ago uh, when we moved over there. So I just want to encourage you to jump on his word.